Good morning, Saints. It is Saturday, April 26, 2020. I want to release some revelation regarding the Lord's Prayer um, and some very significant things in regards to that. When the disciples asked Jesus how to pray, the Lord's purpose in teaching them how to pray was to overcome sin. In June of last year, of June of 2019, Pope Francis changed the Lord's Prayer. He changed the verse of lead us not into temptation to let us not fall into temptation. And you might think, oh, this is not very significant, but it's incredibly significant. These are the words of Jesus, and as Revelation chapter 19, verse 10 says, the testimony of Jesus, or his words, the testimony of Jesus is the Spirit of prophecy. So if you change these words on your authority, you are a false prophet. And as many of you know, this Pope shall fulfill the office of the false prophet spoken of in the book of Revelation. You may be well aware that in June of 2020, the Pope has called all the religions of the world to Hague, Netherlands, to the Peace Palace, to sign a covenant of friendship of religions. And this is the beginning of the formation of the one world religion. In the Netherlands or Netherlands. From the nethermost parts, it's, it's, it's coming up from the bowels of hell, this covenant. And from the one world religion comes the harlot bride. who is in direct opposition to the bride of Jesus Christ. And the harlot bride will be full of the blood of the saints. And the Lord's Prayer, he teaches us how to overcome sin. He says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed or holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Jesus said the kingdom is in you. So he's talking about this kingdom being established in our heart. And who is the king of that kingdom? Jesus Christ. He is to rule there. And Jesus Christ overcame sin. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Our hearts coming into agreement with the will of the Father. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. This is the table prepared for us in the presence of our enemies that we may overcome this world. As David said in Psalm 23, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, that I might overcome them. Thou anointest my head with oil. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. 
It's a fresh anointing of revelation. My cup runneth over. That's the cup of salvation, the blood of Jesus Christ. This is at the table where he's drinking of the Lord and eating of the Lord that he may overcome. How does it say they overcame in the book of Revelation chapter 12? They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, the mercy of Christ, and by the word of their testimony. Those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ, the truth. This is what's in the Lord's Prayer. He is teaching us how to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Having the testimony of Jesus Christ, the true spirit of prophecy. That we may dwell in the house of Yahweh, in the Father's house forever. You see, as Jesus said in John chapter 8, the servant does not abide in the house forever. The son abides in the house, the father's house forever. And you see in the context there, who is the servant? Jesus said, he who sins is the servant of sin. So what Jesus is talking about, you must overcome sin to abide. Abide in the Father's house. And this is what he's teaching us how to do in the Lord's Prayer. This is the intercession of the Lord's Prayer to overcome this world. To overcome the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Just as Jesus Christ overcame them when he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Give us this day our daily bread, the manna from heaven, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the truth. This truth, which is our shield and our buckler to overcome the temptation. This blood, which remits our sins. When we come to the Father in repentance, this blood which covers and puts away the old man as he casts our sins into the depths of the sea. If we fall, we ask for forgiveness and enter right back into the battle and say, no, I shall overcome. Give me, Father, this day my daily bread, a fresh anointing, of truth that I may overcome the lie. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. That's the mercy. So we have mercy and truth here. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, the mercy and the word of their testimony, truth. Proverbs 16, 6 says, By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. There are two things happening right now. The Lord has been bringing me two streams of revelation. The one is the mystery of Christ and Christ arising upon the hearts of his people, an awakening of the hearts of his people to the Christ in them and their true identity and Christ arising upon their hearts so that his glory can be revealed in his bride. But there's also the mystery of iniquity at work, and that is Satan's work in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 speaks of this, that the mystery of iniquity is already at work. And that is a spirit of Antichrist arising upon the hearts of people. The Lord gave me a definition of iniquity 
a while back. And what I heard is iniquity is the perversion of faith. Arising out of the heart of misplaced affection. Iniquity is the perversion of faith arising out of a heart of misplaced affection. See, isn't that what happened in the garden? Lucifer got their affection to turn from the Lord and turn to him to behold to be drawn away by the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life those three realms these are the three realms that Jesus Christ overcame in the wilderness when he was tempted when he was led in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil lust of the eyes lust of the flesh the pride of life Turn this stone into bread, lust of the flesh, brought up into the pinnacle of the temple, and, and Lucifer said, cast yourself down. That's the pride of life. The sin of presumption. Took him up into a high mountain and showed him all the kings, kingdoms of the world in a moment. There's the lust of the eyes. He overcame all three of those realms. And we must overcome all three of those realms to be an overcomer. That's what Jesus is teaching us to do in the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is an intercession to overcome. At this table prepared for us in the presence of of our enemies so that we may overcome them. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. You see, when Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit, he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Why? So that he could overcome the temptation, that he could overcome this world and lead us into an overcoming life, that we could abide in the house of the Father forever. See, at the table prepared for David in the presence of his enemies in Psalm 23, it says, He anointed my head with oil. This anointing of the Holy Spirit. A fresh, fresh revelation of truth that I may overcome the enemy. So that the Lord can lead me to temptation, but to overcome it. How can I overcome something if it's not brought before me? It is a test so that we may overcome. He does not lead us into it, but he leads us to it. Just as he led Jesus to it to be tempted for the purpose that he would overcome. And so every day, as temptations are brought before us, or we're brought before temptations, is so that we may overcome. As we walk in that fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit, in our intimacy with the Lord, eating and drinking of him, where we receive fresh revelation for that day, the Father knows what's going to come before us. And we trust the work is he, that he is doing. 
that he will not lead us into the temptation that we would fall, but he will deliver us from evil. For his is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. It was spoken of of Lucifer in the garden that he was the most subtle of all of God's creation. His subtle lies, this lie of the Pope in changing the Lord's Prayer is oh so subtle. Let us not fall into temptation. He changes the word. Did God really say? Isn't that what Lucifer said in the garden? Did God really say? The Pope says, did Jesus really say? No, this is what it really says. This is the true translation. It should say, let us not fall in temptation. So let us not fall. So if you fall into temptation, it is the Father that didn't deliver you. Father, where are you? How come you are not delivering me from this? And the whole revelation of the prayer is lost. That this whole prayer is about empowering us through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony to overcome. That the Father will lead us to that place to where we overcome and we're victors. A table prepared for us in the presence of our enemies because we are overcomers. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies. We're not victims to sin. But he leads us to the temptation so that we may overcome and deliver us from evil. As Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, verse 13, And now I come unto thee, Father, speaking about coming to the cross, that he, could, that he would prepare this table, that he would shed his blood, that he would give his flesh. And these things I speak in the world, that my joy may be fulfilled in themselves in this fellowship with you, Father. Just if you, you anointed me with the Holy Spirit, just as I have this sweet fellowship with you, to overcome that the devil has no place in me, Jesus said. That my joy might be fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, the truth, that they may overcome. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world as I am not of the world. Father, I pray not that you take them out of the world, but that thou keep them from the evil one. For they are not of the world as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by the, your truth. Thy word is truth. Come by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony of Jesus Christ.
David says in Psalm 16, Preserve me, O God. Preserve me. He says throughout the Psalms that mercy and truth preserve him. He's preserved in fellowship with the Father. He's preserved. And that the enemy cannot take him out. He's preserved at this table that's prepared before him. Psalm 61, David said, Oh, prepare. He says, I will abide before God forever in the Father's house. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which shall preserve me this table that I may abide in your house forever, Father, that I may overcome sin. The servant, the servant of sin does not abide in the house forever. The son abides in the house forever. I will abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which shall preserve, preserve me. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which shall preserve me. So will I sing praises unto your name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Father, thank you that we would place our affection on you alone, on Jesus. That that place of misplaced affection in our heart would be turned back to you. That the Son of righteousness would arise in our hearts with healing in his wings, healing in his rays of light. That all darkness would have to flee. Thank you, Jesus, that you have called us to overcome, that you have showed us and taught us how to overcome. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.